Hello everyone, in my previous video I uh, used the Google Street View image to uh, texture a 3D mesh and this is the result from last time. Now, this time I want to improve the result by estimating the focal length of Google Street View um, because even though the result overall is okay, if you look closely then uh, the texture is shifted, like the windows on the right side of this building are shifted to the right in the texture and on the left side they're shifted to the left and if I look here, then and this this borders between the houses, you can see that here they are shifted to the right again. Uh, so we need to um, do something better, and probably we can do better by uh, estimating the focal length. Because last time I used shift and uh, scroll wheel like this to uh, just align the focal length, but uh, we can do better if we can uh, calibrate the camera. Well, what I can do to calibrate is to use uh, Visual SFM Structure for Motion uh, software uh, using any uh, structure in the world because uh, the camera parameters are determined by the, the viewer actually from Google Street View. It just uses a spherical image of any position in, in the, the map and then depending on the orientation that you choose it will generate a, a camera view with uh, always the same uh, properties so what I need to do now is take a couple of images from the Arc de Triomphe in Paris of uh, slightly different angles moving around it which gives uh, Visual SFM uh, enough information to estimate the structure of the Arc de Triomphe while at the same time also estimating the parameters of the camera I that is used which is the virtual camera from Google Street View and the nice thing about Street View is that um, it doesn't have any radial distortion if you look at uh, the lines in the image they're all straight that means that there's no radial distortion so we, we can um, tell Visual SFM not to estimate any radial distortion and then we'll get a better result. Oh, I have to uh, make a new uh, file otherwise it's shifted. So I'm, and I'm removing all these things because they will um, cause false matches between the images and that will mess up the result. Unfortunately uh, I don't know with the new street view to uh, how to remove all those uh, extra things in the screen that would make it a lot easier So I'm moving around and, and I'm making sure that I'm not getting the front uh, of the image, the, the, the ground, in the view because um, that will not be visible from another uh, position and therefore it will confuse the matching process. So I just want to get the arc itself in the view. which luckily is large enough to fill a region reasonable uh, portion of the screen. Now if we would have to um, calculate radial distortion, but maybe this is not a good example because we don't have any uh, data for the corners of the, of the screen. Uh, but in this case, since there is no radial distortion, then that's not a problem. This will probably be a quite accurately estimating the focal length of the camera. Now let's see, I think this should be enough to get a good um, estimation. So let's load them up. Or Okay, let's see first what, what we have now. Uh, we got some images reasonably similar but still overlap uh, yeah, still um, quite
quite a large uh, rotation change, so that should give a good uh, estimation of the structure. The most difficult thing for visual SFM uh, I found is to uh, is to actually match between the images. The, that that's um, something that can be uh, actually changed, but I don't have any uh, any other um, feature matching. So let's let's try to detect um, the the feature points by pressing this button, and then I will also try to match them between the images. And let's see, it's done now. So let's see how it matched it. Uh, let's see, view in layer matches. Okay, well this is uh, a very different view. So yeah, this is good. This is some kind of this kind of result you actually want to see. So we've got a couple of uh, correct matches here, so it might work. Now what might also help is setting an initial uh, uh, pair. So I'm going to set an initial uh, uh, initialization pair so that it doesn't make any false start. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, I'm also going to turn off um, the radial distortion. So now I'm going to run the 3D uh, point estimation and camera calibration and hopefully it will make a nice result using all the camera views. Uh, sometimes it uh, doesn't use all the views and that probably means that the matching didn't go well. But this looks quite good and uh, what we can do now to improve it is um, tell uh, Visual SFM that we actually use the same camera for all images by saying use shared calibration. And then uh, I will use the BA button, which uh, runs bundle adjustment, and it slightly changes the result, making sure that it has the same focal length for all the views. And and it looks quite good, so I'm happy about this. Let's um, save the result and, and by calculating the, um, the dense uh, point cloud uh, result. Just have to make a name. So it will just uh, um, save the results first, but then it will also make a dense uh, estimation of the structure, which is nice to confirm whether it uh, made a good um, uh, calibration, a good structure for motion. This takes a while. So I'll be back uh, after it's finished. Okay, the dense reconstruction finished now, and it took a little bit over uh, two minutes. So let's see what's the result. Uh, I'm going to view dense 3D points. Okay, so this is the result. And what, what you want to look at is um, mainly that the angles that should be straight are indeed straight. Sometimes uh, a 90 degree angle might look different in the result and that would mean that um, there would be something wrong with the calibration of the camera. But this looks um, really nice. So. Uh, I think we can use this result. And uh, what we will do is look at um, the output files that have been generated before it started the dense reconstruction. Uh, it made this directory, and inside there is this uh, other directory, and then uh, directory 00. zero um, and inside of that, um, we find the um, bundle rd out file, which is uh, the most important file we, uh, we need for. Uh, for MeshLab, and also we need to use this uh, list file which lists the images. And I'm just going to copy those um, to our uh, Mesh directory with the Google Street View image we want to use for texturing. Ah, I still had the list there, okay, then I'll just replace it. Um, <coughs> so, what this is, is a list of um, images um, and we don't really need them but we just want to use the, our own uh, street view image so we're just going to replace the whole list with one file name and save and close and this bundle uh, out file is uh, is very nice because uh, we can straight open this straight into oh just a moment telephone Sorry about that. 
Okay, in the bond of file we got uh, six uh, intrinsic and extrinsic parameters for uh, the six different uh, views from the Arc de Triomphe and also 1467 feature points uh, of the Arc de Triomphe and we don't need those and also um, we don't need more than one camera because we have only one texture from Bremen and this is the focal length for all of the five, uh, six cameras uh, the, the, the last part is a little bit different but it's probably numerical rounding errors or something, I don't know it should be roughly the same because we said that they are all the same uh, camera so by you turning on use shared calibration visual SFM so let's remove everything we don't need and then uh, because actually the, the I don't find any other way of loading up the focal length into a mesh lab than, than using a bundler file and this is the um, extrinsic calibration and, and I don't really know this for the um, for the mesh in Bremen because that's what we need to do manually and this is just corresponding to the reconstruction from the Arc de Triomphe so let's just remove this and turn it into an identity matrix and we have to be careful to put points everywhere because otherwise it doesn't work and this is the location of the camera also I put points here and I'm going to put it uh, far away from the origin, looking at the origin, so I can hopefully see my mesh in the initial view and this scale might be different for different, if, if in your case maybe your scale is different, this is ten, this is 100 meters in my case uh, ok, so let's save this and one thing we also probably need to fix is that this probably should end up with a return after the last line ok, and now we can try to load it in uh, MeshLab and it will open it in an empty project and I, it asks for me for the file with the, the names of the textures so hopefully I can uh, see the texture, yeah this is the one I need for Bremen um, and then we got it here with the FOV 7.4.0 or whatever that's a conversion uh, from the focal length that we uh, entered and now we don't have anything else so this is just empty Let's load up our mesh from the laser scan again. And hopefully we should see it in the view because of the initialization. Uh, okay, it went back to standard, so we have to click the raster again. So this is the raster view now. It's initialized with the FOV 7.4. And now we can uh, try to uh, align it with our mesh again manually. But first let's move it into center because otherwise it might not zoom correctly. Okay, and then it's like that. That makes it a little bit easier to navigate. So we have to be careful not uh, using the shift and the scroll wheel of the mouse anymore because that will wipe out the result that we loaded up with the bundler file from the, the calibration that we did. So I'm just moving around, uh, zooming and rotating and shifting until it um, fits to the to the Google Street View image again just to make it a little bit larger forwards a little bit
Okay, well, that seems to be all right. Uh, it might be better, but I think we're already better than last time. So let's now save this uh, trackball result into the roster as the new roster camera before we do anything else. Uh, let's see. Camera, set roster camera, get shot from what I just did, the current trackball, and apply it to the mesh. To, sorry, to the the roster image and now we can try to again texture with this new view with the calibrated uh, focal length and then we are going to again uh, remove non-manifold uh, edges because I still didn't uh, save it with the corrected result okay so I selected now the non-manifold edges and then I should uh, be able to remove them now and uh, let's see if we can now use texturing again. Let's make it a bit higher resolution and apply. Let's see what's going to happen now. <coughs> and again uh, it will generate a new file with the uh, texture uh, parts of the uh, street view image. Yes, there it is. This is our new texture file. And let's see what's the result. Now let's turn off our uh, roster and uh, have a look. So here, the there's a little bit better alignment here. And here. Not so much shifted anymore as before. And then look at the edges because those are usually most difficult the outside parts see how they align so that's not too bad I think it's, uh, it's a major improvement although it's maybe also I took some more time to align so anyway that's uh, how we did a lot of effort to just get one value for improving our results but if you need to do a lot of texturing with a lot of images um, from Google Street View for different parts of the city then you only need to get uh, this uh, focal length once and then you can use the same value for all your uh, views as long as you make sure that um, you generate uh, the views using exactly the same setup that you also uh, uh, use your uh, calibration because even if I press 11 F F11 to uh, go to window mode or full screen mode uh, the number of pixels of the image changes and since the focal length is measured in uh, pixels, it changes the focal length. So just make sure you uh, get all your images in the same way. And so uh, anytime you take a texturing image from Google Street View, it's good to take uh, directly some images from the Arc Triumph or another structure which is easy to uh, to use SFM uh, on and then uh, and then save the result together. So uh, next uh, video I will uh, show how to skip the manual um, uh, alignment and, and use some type points uh, to calculate actually the, the pose of the camera instead of this uh, process of manually aligning it and that should make an even more accurate result. So uh, watch out for that video and uh, thanks for watching.